Good morning. Good morning. The, the room is full. And uh, it's not only full, but I think we have uh, all, the, all the relevant people uh, from the industry are here, from central banks, uh, experts, uh, regulators, everybody's here. So welcome uh, to this uh, ECB retail payment conference with the title in Innovative and Integrated European Retail Payments Market. And uh, yeah, it's good to see you here, maybe once more, I don't know, the last time at the old ECB building. Only at the end of 25, the ECB will move out here, but then it will be over and it, uh, it's a history since uh, 1994. So it will be the last retail payment conference here for sure. That's likely so. And uh, because we had um, seven such conferences in total since let's say 1999, and um, this one, the last one was in 2019, so there was a, a COVID break and then we needed to recover maybe and to realize that the conferences are, are useful and to, to relaunch one. And um, yeah, we cannot complain that not enough is happening uh, in this industry, uh, really uh, quite the contrary. So, um, not I mean, a lot of very relevant things are happening with digitalization. Things are really accelerating, and with the digital euro, of course, um, which itself is a is a part, a consequence of digitalization. It is not a ad hoc idea of the central bank to come with the digital euro. So it's part of this movement, but it will trigger itself probably further dynamics for further transformation. So it is good in this conference to have this topic also on the agenda, certainly. And uh, yeah, we have 200 people here again, and they are from 29 countries, I understand. And not only there are 200 people here in the room, but the event is also uh, live streamed. So uh, welcome also to the uh, remote uh, participants. And uh, in terms of the program, yeah, we will have uh, two keynote speeches, one by executive board member Piero Cipollone in a moment, and then uh, after uh, around lunch, uh, I guess after lunch, but I don't know, not sure after lunch, at 1.45, Commissioner McGuinness uh, will talk uh, remotely. And then we have four panels, one on the full deployment of instant payment, one on a public private sector coexistence. So that is uh, something that we always had and we will have in the future, but things uh, change and this uh, coexistence uh, has to be redesigned probably in the future. Then we have uh, one on consumer perspective and inclusion, and then finally one on uh, cross-border. And yeah, I hope you, you fi will find this uh, event interesting and useful. And uh, of course, we have foreseen uh, interventions from the public, so it should be a true discussion. And if you have any questions, uh, Eileen and, uh, and her team uh, stand ready on organizational things. And I should mention, if you um, want to leave the building, that's not a good idea because you have to uh, re-go re through the entire security uh, measures, yeah? So if you are a smoker, think twice if you can wait until the end of the day. Uh, yeah, then uh, let me welcome Piero Cipollone and uh, listen to his keynote speech to kick off the debate. So good morning, everyone. Pretty impressive uh, to see so many people here, which means that the topic is hot. And um, so probably, hopefully, we will have a very, very fruitful discussion today. So <clears throat> it is a great pleasure to welcome you today at this conference. When the SEPA was, was launched in 2002, payments between uh, Euro area countries were slower, more cumbersome, and more expensive than domestic payments. And yet, Many part, market participants questioned at, at that time the merit of the project. The initial uh, skepticism turned out to be unfounded. 
as a SEBA proved to be a success, I would say a great success. We no longer differentiate between national and cross-border payments for credit transfer and direct debit. But this success did not extend to digital payments at the point of interaction, namely for in-store, mobile or e-commerce payments. Person-to-person -person solution also remained fragmented. Most European retail payment solutions are focused on national market and digital cross-border transaction with, you, with the euro area depends on a very small number of non-European market players. This hampers competition, innovation and resilience. Today, as in the past, the effort to extend the SEPA are being questioned. Do we really need a new, uh, need a single euro payments area at the point of interaction? People are asking. Do we really need a digital euro? The answer, much like in the two days ago, two decades ago, is an unequivoc unequivocally yes. We cannot afford to settle for the status quo. Therefore, in my remarks today, I will advocate for a comprehensive vision encompassing both public and private retail payments. Our goal is clear, to further integrate European payments with a view to supporting competition and innovation while reducing excessive dependencies. The ECB is today calling on the payment, payments industry to redouble its effort. Let me start with the status quo. Despite the integration of the, Euro, of the Euro retail payments market over the past 15 years, today's ecosystem is facing three major challenges. First, European payment solutions remain fragmented along national lines. Currently, citizens who live work, travel, or shop online in another Euro area country find themselves reliant on a very few non-European solutions. As more companies that consider expanding their business across borders or are online may be more reluctant to do so, given the need to rely on those solutions and bear the associated costs. We are thus in a paradoxical situation. The fragmentation of, of European payment solution along national line stand in the way of deepening the single market and the further digitalization of the economy. Some of the benefits of reducing the barrier to trade and accelerating the digitalization within the EU are at the risk of not reaching European consumers, instead growing the rents of the few non-European players that currently make it possible to pay in shops and online across Europe. Second, the failure of European payment solution to achieve a pan-European -Euro pan scale has resulted in limited competition at the point of interaction. This issue is particularly pronounced for card payments, which, in terms of value, now account for the majority of retail payments transactions. They share in the total number of digital, digital transactions has also been increasing, while that of credit transfer and direct debit has receded. According to the most recent data, international card schemes process close to two-thirds of the all electronic initiated transaction with card issued in the euro area. And 13 out of 20 euro area countries rely on them entirely due to, due to the absence of our national card scheme. 
limited competition in turn translating into higher fees. According to a recent study by the European Commission, the average net merchant service charges applied by, car by card scheme in the EU almost doubled between 2018 and 2022. The lack of competition is a problem in other segments too, as, uh, such as e-commerce, mobile, and person-to-person -person payments. Moreover, big techs entering payments uh, create further risks, as they could leverage their dominant position in neighboring markets and their close um, ecosystem. The third major challenge for euro area retail payments is the dependence on non-European players. Openness to global competition is essential for fostering innovation. But over-reliance makes our payment and financial system vulnerable to external disruption. European alternative would improve our resilience. To tackle these challenging if challenges effectively, we must take action to move away from the status quo. I would like to thank the, Euro the Commissioner McGuinness and the European Commission as a whole for their continuous support and legislative ambition in this regard. At the ECB, we envisage a future where retail payments are faster, cheaper, easier and more resilient thanks to a diversity of pan-European means of payment using European infrastructures. Our proposal encompasses two complementary transformation policies, mirroring the dual pillars of the financial system, public and private money. These policies are not contradictory in nature. Rather, they complement each other. Let me start with public money. As we transition into the digital age, there is no reason why public money should not go digital as all other means of forms of payments. This is why we are launching the Digital Euro project. A digital form of cash would preserve the role of central bank money in the economy. First and foremost, a digital euro would pro provide unparalleled pan-European pan pan reach, ensuring that payments can be conducted seamless anytime, anywhere within the euro area for all types of payments, both online and offline. As a public good, a digital euro would be provided to citizen free of charge for basic use. Crucially, a digital euro would uphold stringent privacy and inclusive standards. The euro system is committed to offering a digital euro app that would not only support accessibility, but also be designed um, such that everybody will um, immediately recognize the digital euro. This app is the, is, uh, does essential for achieving the objective of digital euro. At the same time, it would not impinge on the relationship between PSPs and their customers. And PSP will be free to provide customized value-added services in their own apps and wallets. Alongside the digital euro, our vision on payments entail a strategy centered on fostering the development of private, privately operated European governed pan European payment solution at the point of interaction. The Euro system supports market led initiatives that meet a set of requirements it has defined for a European solution at the point of interaction. The ECB therefore welcomes the European Payment Initiative, which has recently made further significant progress. ECB encourage API 
to continue its progress and to expand its geographical coverage to achieve pan-European reach. Furthermore, the ECB views favorably initiative by mobile payments solution and third party providers recognize that they may enhance competition. For instance, a recent collaboration involving three national mobile payment solutions seeks to achieve interoperability in person-to-person -person interaction transaction and subsequently at the point of interaction. Inter interoperability could be viewed as an intermediate step toward merging into a single payment solution. At the same time, we need to avoid fragmentation with national community joining solution that covers only part of the euro area. This would prevent payment solution from uh, taking advantage of the sheer sky scale of the single market. Therefore, while working uh, to make progress uh, on their current plans, private initiative and national communities could consider joining forces to create strong integrated solution and aim for pan-European reach with a reasonable short time horizon. Although this has not materialized so far, we could be short-sighted to stick to position taken in the past rather than grasp the opportunity offered by a landscape in transformation. The public sector can facilitate such an initi initiative to reach a pan-European scale. In particular, the digital euro could play a key role in shaping open standards. The euro system is actively working on a digital euro rulebook. Along with the robust infrastructure provided by the euro system, it would allow private providers to reach pan-European scale with their own payment solution achieving cost effectiveness, efficiencies, and contributing to an integrated European payment market. This would give users access to a wider array of services and result in greater competition and innovation. Imagine a new pan-European solution offering an innovative front-end solution designed for conditional payments, micropayments application, making it easier to buy online content services, automatic refund when rail journeys or flight are delayed, or options like rewards, bonuses, and subscription. But our retail payment strategy extends beyond the point of interaction. The second major, major goal of the European the Eurosystem strategy is to strengthen the classical SEPA framework. A key priority within this framework is the full development of Eastern payments. Eastern payments could generate important benefit. For instance, for businesses, they reduce the amount of money locked in processing, allowing for better cash and liquidity management, and reducing the needs of, for overdraft facilities. Additionally, ongoing initiatives such as the SEPA Payment Accounts Access Scheme contribute to enhancing independence and innovation. The ECB welcomes this inno uh, innovative European road to open banking and encourage market players to join the scheme. However, the effectiveness of new schemes can uh, sometimes fall short of expectations. For instance, PSP implement, implement property solution instead of using the, new, the newly designed SEPA scheme. Clarifying the reason for such shortcoming may be worthwhile. We are entering a new phase in payments that demand additional effort reallocation of resources and, pro and proper planning for uh, industry stakeholders. <clears throat> Opting for joint investment, leveraging economies, economies of scale 
would enhance the, eff the efficiency and the effectiveness of our common effort. And aligning this investment with the introduction of the digital euro would further maximize outcome. Let me conclude. Innovative, integrated, and independent uh, rail payments, retail payments are crucial component of our monetary system. The establishment of SEPA and the widespread acceptance of cash as a universally accepted payments method were crucial for achieving a higher level of integration and efficiency in European retail payments. However, we now stand at a crossroad as payment transition into the digital euro with the risk of crowding out public money and European providers failing to be competitive on a pan-European, let alone global scale. To address these challenges, we have to set up two transform transformation strategies, the digital euro and the retail payment strategy. The digital euro will, will not only give Europeans more freedom of choice and the ability to pay with a secure solution that is widely widely accepted throughout the euro, the entire, the entire euro area. It will also establish a common infrastructure with pan-European reach on which private intermediaries could build to offer competitive and, and innovative private payment solution across Europe. Public-private cooperation can achieve great integration innovation and the independence in payment to the benefit of consumer, merchant, and payment service provider. Together, we can recapture the original spirit of SEPA and take it to the next level at the point of interaction. Thank you very much for listening.